Hey, I'm Sam. Welcome to Brickwell Pictures. Today's review is for the 1989 novel And the Ass Saw the Angel, written by Nick Cave of Nick Cave and the Bad Seeds fame. I'm a massive fan of Nick Cave. I'd say him and the Bad Seeds are about tied with Talking Heads for the number one spot on my favorite bands list. They kind of switch between the top two spots depending on my mood. I love the Bad Seeds and all of Cave's other musical endeavors, like Grinder Man, The Birthday Party, and everything he does with Warren Ellis, like their movie soundtracks and their recent Carnage album. Warren Ellis' band Dirty Three is great as well. I voraciously consume any and all Nick Cave content, so of course I would be eager to check out his first novel. I mean, hell, I've seen several documentaries about the guy, the best of which is One More Time with Feeling, by the way, if you're interested in checking one of those out. I actually read And the Ass Saw the Angel about two years ago at this point, and I've been meaning to review it ever since. It wasn't a book I felt comfortable reviewing right away. It took a lot of reflection to figure out exactly how I felt about this one. It's not a simple piece of work. And the ass saw the angel tells the story of Eucrid Eucro, a mute and mentally unstable young man who spirals deeper and deeper into both violence and insanity as the story progresses. And yes, all of the characters have cool and memorable names like Eucrid Eucro. Religion, prostitution, communication, and alienation are all major areas of thematic exploration in this story, with a thick layer of southern gothic styling. The setting and atmosphere are rich and oppressive, and the characters all feel larger than life and distinctive, but especially the protagonist, Euclid. Much of the story is told from Euclid's point of view, and what a unique point of view it is. This is one seriously messed up protagonist, and Cave keeps the reader deeply rooted in this character's disturbed psyche. Euclid is a man prone to delusions, and his manner of internal monologue is desultory more often than not. Both of these factors lead to a narrative where it can be quite difficult to parse exactly what is happening at certain points, and beyond that, difficult to tell what is literal and what is delusional. Now, this is both a good and a bad thing. This disconnection from reality bolsters the character work Cave is doing with the protagonist, and it effectively grounds you within his deranged headspace but it also carries with it this drawback of limiting the effectiveness of the plot. It's a bit of a trade-off. You can get a more compelling character experience in place of a more cohesive story. For me, the approach mostly works, and it certainly makes the story feel unique, but it also lessened my enjoyment and engagement of the latter portions of the book to a degree. Something you can say about Nick Cave that you can't always say about other musicians is that it's abundantly clear from his lyricism how great of a writer he is. If you're familiar with his music, then you know that the way he crafts lyrics makes it obvious that his literary talents could easily translate to other mediums, like he has done. More so than many songwriters, Cave is a storyteller through his music, and his songs frequently unfold like short stories, poetry, or a bold fusion of the two. So many musicians are content to write about their own lives or about things or ideas, while so few seem to write about characters the way that Nick Cave does. He once described his songwriting process as whipping up a couple of characters and having them either fall in love or kill each other. He also said once that songs really only ever about three things when you get right down to it, love, murder, or God. And, and the Ass the Angel is about all three. Cave's prose is the highlight of the novel. Even when the story falters a bit under the weight of its protagonist's storm cloud psyche, the prose is never anything short of stunning. There are even passages in this book that have a lyrical quality to them that fans of his music are sure to love. And the Ass the Angel first began taking shape as a film script called Swampland that Cave co-wrote with Evan English before it became a novel. Though nothing came of that script, Cave and English still wound up sharing screenwriting credit as two of the five writers of Ghosts of the Civil Dead in 1988. This is a film that I've wanted to see for a while and I just couldn't find a copy of. Even on Amazon, the only available copy is a Region Zero VHS tape for $85. I did finally just find a copy of it, though. So if I have a lot to say about it, I might end up making a video about that. Who knows? Ghosts of the Civil Dead was the first film from director John Hillcoat, who Nick Cave has worked with a whole bunch. Hillcoat even directed Nick Cave's two Western screenplays, Lawless and The Proposition. The former of which is pretty good, and the latter of which is fucking great. One of my favorite Westerns. And the Ass Saw the Angel has certain elements in common with both of those Westerns, but it's far more psychological. After the Swampland script prospects fell apart, Cave took the leftover ingredients and expanded them into this novel. I'd be curious to see how a film version of this would have turned out, but And the Ass of the Angel would be extremely difficult to adapt without losing most of the essence of the piece, since so much of its efficacy comes from the deep-rooted perspective of the protagonist. And I think you'd likely have to lose much or all of that 
in a screen adaptation. While Anne the Ass Saw the Angel isn't always 100% effective, it is a unique experience written with gripping prose and a fascinating main character. For fans of Nick Cave, it's a must read. For non-fans of Nick Cave, I would still recommend it if it sounds like your kind of thing, the way I've described it. For super fans of the novel or of Cave, I also recommend tracking down the Anne the Ass Saw the Angel album from Nick Cave, Mick Harvey, and Ed Clayton Jones. You should be able to find it on YouTube. And that's album in air quotes because it's not exactly what this is. It's a supporting piece for the novel that features music along with Cave reading excerpts from the book. And hearing these passages performed by Cave will likely have you wishing he had made a full audiobook experience for the novel presented in this manner. I know I was wishing for it. It's damn cool. It's also a good way to get a taste of the writing if you aren't sure whether or not the book is for you before buying a copy. My cave of vine and moss is to my right about ten paces into that thicket that surrounds me now. So dense grows the swampland that sometimes it would take me up to thirty minutes to find the little hideaway I had fashioned. I had been there hundreds and hundreds of times. I would look for the strips of white sheet, bright like bush ghosts that hung around the woven walls. They would tell me where. Thanks for watching. Subscribe if you want more stuff like this. Or not. Whatever.